Today we're talking about headphones and the various bits of software that you can pair with these to alter the sound for better or worse. Recently I bought and reviewed the Slate VSX headphone system and if you're not aware, use Clever DSP to simulate being in different listening environments with a variety of speakers from high-end mastering studios to car audio to boombox to phone speaker. Now for a few reasons I didn't get on with them but that review really got me thinking and to be honest has opened a bit of a can of worms for me. When you buy VSX you're really paying for the software. The headphones themselves are okay decent enough but honestly they're nothing special. I already have good headphones so I don't need more and there's software that can do a similar job to what Slate does, namely Sonarworks, Sound ID Reference and Dear VR Mix. I'm aware there's others but I bought all of the above and I wanted to investigate compare and just see what's best. As ever, I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip around to the bits you want. If you want to hear about just one of those, then just, you know, down there. I'm also on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers and it would really make my day if you could take just a second to hit that subscribe button. It costs you nothing, it helps me out massively, helps the channel and I appreciate it. Thank you so much in advance. I will link to all the products below, but just know this is not sponsored content and the companies who make the products don't know that I'm making this video. Um, so this is unsponsored content, but it is made possible by my Patreon backers. The idea with that is any funds from Patreon, I put back into the channel, I buy gear like this kind of thing, and then I give the gear to my backers by way of, of a giveaway. Uh, if that's of interest, do check it out, it's all linked below. Onward. So kicking off with Slate VSX, and to be brutally honest, I actually quite disliked most of the room emulations and it's subjective, you may love them, that's fine. I know the point of them is for them to have lots of crosstalk and sound really revealing, but I would also expect to really enjoy the sound of listening through a set of expensive, I don't know, barefoot monitors, for example, and I just don't. It's slightly frustrating because I can't really show you this because it's a very personal thing listening to it on headphones, but just to paint you a picture of what I'm hearing with VSX, the bass frequencies to me sound like they do in a fairly untreated room, yeah, a little out of control. The top end, generally, in most spaces, I find sounds quite trashy and fatiguing as well. And the mid frequencies, it's almost like with each room emulation, it's like someone has picked a point on a, uh, an EQ uh, chart and just boosted a random mid frequency. That's what it sounds like to me. None of these things are what I would expect to hear when sat in front of great speakers in a great room. It's just not. However, VSX also has emulations of other headphones, which is fascinating. Now, I actually own two of the headphones that it was emulating, and um, I can tell you, to my ear, it's not quite nailed, is how I would describe it. Before I bought VSX, I thought, great, you know, can this actually replace some of my other headphones and I can just, I can sell them and just use this? But, mm -mm. I was, I was wrong. It can attempt to recreate the EQ curve of great open back headphones, but I'm telling you, they cannot live up to the real thing. They just don't have that kind of same spacious open feel where it's almost like you can, if you close your eyes and you're listening to, to a song, you can almost see where all the instruments are. And, you know, comparing it to something like my uh, Neumann NDH30s, which I reviewed recently, definitely check it out. Um, they, they are, it's, it's no match. My main gripes that I had with VSX really though are with the headphones themselves. I have reservations about the build quality. I really don't like the collagen leather ear pads and I do find them fatiguing to use over longer periods. I know this sounds overly harsh on VSX, but I do want to say I didn't hate it. And if it wasn't for the small kind of negatives I had with the actual headphones themselves, I may have actually kept it. 
but I couldn't. Moving on to Sonoworks Sound ID reference software. And this software contains hundreds of frequency measurements from you know hundreds of different headphone types. Simply find your headphones profile and Sonoworks will apply an EQ curve to counteract its natural frequency response and in theory, make them sound more flat and neutral. And you know what? It really works. And I actually prefer all of my headphones with Sonoworks switched on. That's how well it works. Sonoworks and Dear VR Mix both have what is, in my opinion, a pretty big advantage in that you can use your favorite headphones. You might say, yeah, but you get calibrated headphones with VSX, but hold your horses because those are only fine, really. And I would say, for, I don't know, if you were to spend $120 pounds, euros, you are gonna get an infinitely better sounding set of headphones, such as the utterly brilliant Biodynamic DT990 Pros. I'm also betting that most potential customers for this kind of software already own decent headphones. So, you know, why spend money on something that you don't need? This makes no sense. I'm admittedly a bit of a headphone uh, file. No, let's go with headphone junkie. I've got the Sennheiser HD 650s, fantastic classics. I've got the uh, Biodynamic 770 Pro, which you can see over my shoulder. I've got the Neumann NDH 30s, fairly new ones. I reviewed it recently, as I said, definitely check it out and more to come. Like I said, I prefer all of these headphones with Sonoworks switched on, and this could just be a personal preference thing. I seem to favor superbly neutral headphones, and that's just me, and you know, it might be a personal preference thing, but yeah, I like all of my headphones with Sonoworks. As for its other listening environments, you can see there's a good range of options, and I found them all more convincing, useful, and revealing compared to VSX. This is subjective, and some will disagree, but that's how I feel. It's worth mentioning that there is a significant volume drop when you engage Sonoworks. This is to compensate for the differences in volume from correcting the frequency response curve. This could be an issue if you're using really high impedance headphones and are already having to crank your volume. It's worth noting that the studio speaker setup emulations, Sonoworks call virtual monitoring, is an additional expense if you go for the basic package and they do sound very good. Overall, I'm pretty blown away with Sonoworks. It's something I didn't really know I needed and now I can't switch it off. <laughs> Um, I also love um, the value side of things. It's uh, it's a tiered pricing structure. I don't think it's expensive, and I do like that it's tiered, and actually you get quite a lot from the ground level. And I think the top level, you only really need that if you're doing kind of uh, Atmos mixing, 360 mixing. It's also not a subscription model, which is just music to my ears these days. It seems like everything is, you know, a subscription model. Um, I also, I really like that they haven't locked away the features that almost everyone will need behind the most expensive paywall. Um, so I appreciate that, it's it's well thought out. Moving on to Dear VR Mix, and this is a bit of software that's engineered by Sennheiser Ambio, and this is kind of quite exciting for me because along with the other many nerdy things that I'm nerdy about, I'm also a, a bit of a hi-fi uh, and sort of home audio nerd. And Sennheiser Ambio have some really cool products. Their current Ambio Max soundbar is quite expensive for a soundbar, but is ridiculously good. It delivers that 360 degree Dolby Atmos thing using, I think it's called wave beaming, correct me if I'm wrong from just a soundbar. Incredible. So I'd say that Sennheiser really have quite a bit of pedigree when it comes to the kind of psychoacoustic creating these um, room emulations. And honestly, when listening to Dear VR Mix, you can really tell. This also has the all important headphone compensation where you can search for your model of headphone and it will kind of compensate for its frequency response. I would say that the flat headphone Profiles, I just don't find them quite as good, quite as neutral or flat as Sonoworks. They just don't feel, you know, truly ruler flat. However, to my ear, I would say Dear VR Mix 
might be the best of the three when it comes to uh, the, how convincing the room emulations are. You can see here what you get and they're all pretty good. A big part of what sells these spaces are the ambience and focus sliders, which really help to kind of dial in how extreme each environment sounds. The highlights of these for me are the analytic dry mode, which just gives you a direct feed to your headphones with the compensation, but with some early reflections that you'd get in a room plus some crosstalk. And that I think is pretty genius. The other one that I really like is just the room one. It's, they've done a really good job. It works really well. It sounds like you're actually in a good sounding room. Something I noticed with Dear VR Mix sonically versus Sonarworks is that the high frequencies, I found them to be just quite a bit more pronounced. And I'm not sure if that's just more of being more revealing and I've got some sort of nasty sounding high frequencies in my mixes. It's possible, or I would say, the more likely scenario is that that headphone compensation isn't doing just as good a job of making your headphones ruler flat and there's just some residual high frequencies there. Don't know. What I do know is that until my ears kind of adjust to that, I will end up with darker mixes when mixing with Dear VR Mix because, you know, I'll compensate in my mixing. The last thing to say about Dear VR Mix is about the pricing. It's uh, this one gets the win on pricing because you know what? One price, no subscription model, and it's the best value. You know, it's the least pricey. Uh, and how can you not like that? It's, uh, yeah, it's a win. I really appreciate that. Good. And now moving on to the pros and cons of each. Uh, I've never done this before in a, in a video review. So here it goes. Let's start off with VSX. So you get headphones with it. It's a package deal and this is a big pro for some people. You get a large range of rooms and speakers available in this package. There's probably something for everyone there. It's really good for stereo imaging. That's one strength of this package. I'd also say the crosstalk is particularly good. And onto the cons, and you already have headphones, don't you? And the only way to get the VSX software is to fork out for a package deal, which includes headphones that, yeah, you, you don't need. The build quality of those headphones is only okay. It doesn't really compare to most headphones in the one to 200 pound dollars euros range. Subjectively, I really couldn't get on with the odd collagen leather ear pad material. Just me. There are so many rooms with the platinum edition that I got that I found I had option paralysis. The more desirable room emulations cost more, either from the Slate marketplace or by buying the expensive platinum edition. This makes sense from a business point of view, of course, but it kind of sucks for the user. Subjectively, I found it not as immersive or convincing a listening experience as the marketing would suggest, especially in comparison to the other software options in this video. I found the headphones fatiguing for long periods. Really something to bear in mind there. The value, I would say, not great, for the price of the basic VSX Essentials Edition, you could get a stunning pair of headphones like the Biodynamic DT990 Pro 250 Ohm Edition and either Sound ID Reference or Dia VR Mix. And then the pros and cons for Sound ID Reference and starting with the pros, you can use your favorite headphones. That goes for Dear VR Mix 2. I loathe having to buy headphones I don't want with VSX, so I'd say this is arguably a better option. The EQ correction for any headphone model is game-changing and in my opinion is well worth the price of the basic package. You get a more manageable selection of listening environments. I get very little, if any, feeling of option paralysis in my experience. To me, the speaker emulation options sounded quite a bit more convincing compared to VSX not to mention enjoyable. It's pretty great value for money. For something that improves all my headphones and use every day, I think this is a steal. And the cons and in theory, Sonarworks usefulness is limited by the overall quality of your headphones. But luckily the price of admission into the good quality headphone market is really not that bad these days and I'll link a few of my recommendations for the very best. The tiered pricing is a con for some people. There's a jump for the speaker emulation, although, you know, it's not a subscription model and I didn't feel like I was missing out by not choosing the very top package. There's a big volume dip to compensate for frequency changes. It's understandable, 
but it could be tricky with high impedance headphones depending on the power of your device. Finally on to Deer VR Mix and starting with the pros, just like Sonoworks, you can use your choice of headphones. It's a win. I found the sense of space with Dia VR Mix really to be quite outstanding. And I'd say the emulations are very good. That's that Sennheiser Ambio pedigree for you. I particularly like the analytic dry setting. It's really quite revealing, I'd say. There's just one price to pay and no tiered pricing and no subscription model. What's not to like about that? For those reasons, I'd say this is great value versus the others. Onto the cons and also like Sonoworks, it's limited by the quality of your headphones. I definitely say the headphone compensation is not quite as good or neutral sounding compared to Sonoworks. And I found the high frequencies to be more pronounced regardless of my headphone type, so much so that this would definitely take an adjustment period. Finally to my recommendations and I first want to say that I am thinking of doing deeper dive videos into both Sonoworks and Dear VR Mix of you know how to use them and get the best out of them so definitely get subscribed to see them. I am also aware there are lots of other bits of software that do a kind of similar thing like Hornet VHS I know that Waves have one Tone Booster's Morphit is meant to be very good. Good Hertz can opener I keep hearing about. But please let me know if you have experience with any of those. Uh, I am interested, definitely let me know your experience. So whilst I didn't exactly hate VSX, I just don't know if in good conscience I can recommend it to people because here's the thing, beginners I think will find it, uh, they'll have just option paralysis. I think it's just too much. And for more experienced guys, you know, you're going to be spending money on something that you already have, which is a good pair of headphones. And the ones that you get with Slate are just, I've covered it. These things just don't add up to representing good value in my opinion, but the same can't be said for both Sonoworks and DRVMX. Uh, I just think whichever one you go for of those two, you are getting a superb bit of software. You heard my pros and cons. I think overall, if you pair one of those bits of software with any, you know, half decent even pair of headphones, you have got yourself a really powerful setup that will last you a good long while. My preference is Sonoworks and that's just because I find that it's the one that I keep going back to, and that it has to be a clear sign, doesn't it? I think the reason for that is that it just does the whole headphone compensation, EQ curve compensation thing better, and that's important to me. Dear VR Mix, I would say though, is superb and a really close second. I do prefer the room emulations on Dear VR Mix, and I'd say the value also is, is just a really big uh, thing that it's got going for it. But as I said, either of those two bits of software can't go wrong. Like I said earlier, it's really a shame that I can't actually show you with sound clips what I'm hearing, but I hope that my describing my experience is helpful and, um, and interesting to you and it you know, maybe helps you to make the decision for yourself. That's it for now. I do want to hear from you. I want to hear your experience. Has your experience differed to mine? Do you agree with you know, what I've said in this video? What could I have done differently? Uh, I'm down in the comments, you know, whenever I can be. So, you know, I'll see you down there. I've now made hundreds of videos about audio and video of which the algorithm has picked this video for you to watch next and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. <laughs>